Hello, I have just finished a Skype call and it really was not an easy talk and coming together because of the topic. I think it is a topic for artists, creatives or people that want to sell their creative abilities, whatever it may be, that is making us feel uneasy and not only uneasy that's not the main problem it can be also something that can be really a showstopper for your artistic career for your artistic progression and the problem is the isolation artists and creatives tend to be people that can isolate themselves it is going beyond the problem of being an introvert um, and like in this case, is it something that is bothering this person on, on a professional level, level, but also the personal level? I am not, not a psychiatrist, not a therapist, so I can't, cannot go into this area. I will talk only about the professional side of actually uh, this. So uh, whatever I'm suggesting or giving you a, a idea about, don't confuse it with, with the personal side of uh, isolation. And there are people that are perhaps more into this topic and can give perhaps better advice that I am doing. What I'm doing are uh, just giving idea or trying to, to, to give you another perspective because this topic of isolation as an artist, in, in, indeed, it has a positive side. Of course, this is also what I'm doing when I'm writing, when I'm have starting a new, um, new, new series of paintings, whatever it is do, I'm doing as a creative, I am going first into a isolation where I have the personal space and the personal uh, freedom to do whatever I'm wanting with, without getting confronted or questions or whatever it is. So isolation for artists professionally seen is something that is actually good, but it can really be a showstopper for your artistic progression. So too much of it, it's like with everything, too much of it can actually uh, be a disaster for your artistic progression because in the first place you are starting to spin too much around yourself and I have seen so many artists that has the most wonderful potential but because they are so involved only with what they are thinking what they are saying there's no connection in time with with the world out there and you can have the best art you want really the make most magnificent paintings but when they are when when these old paintings are in your cellar in, in your own home and nobody is seeing them this art in a way becomes useless it is perhaps a use for you and you can enjoy it but nevertheless art is most vital when it is it's a way of communicating so the keeping your art and yourself from communication with people out there is making you in a way poorer and literally it is making you poorer because the exchange and communication and exchange of values with the artistic world is what will make you profit what will make you successful when you look at it professionally artists successful artists understand the balance how they are isolating themselves and how much they are also talking to other people even professionally networking and they can balance this act they know that isolation and being a little bit of an introvert is important to create something but nevertheless there is a phase perhaps in the beginning when you want to get as much impression as you like or afterwards when you want to actually show what you have developed when you will, uh, uh, will um, bring forward the, all the values that you have created to share it with other people, to exchange it with other people. And this act of balancing and knowing what, what is too much, what is too little, is really something to think about. Because the more you are clinching to this myth that is most likely developed in the, in the books about the artists, and, and some artists like Van Gogh, they seem to be someone that is lonely and working on his art, and, and then suddenly he appears as, as the hero. It's really a myth. Even uh, Van Gogh was trying, was staying with his brother in communication. When he was in Paris, he was exchanging ideas with other artists. He invited uh, Gauguin 
to, to South France. So there was always exchange. This is really a myth. Art is a communication and to get involved in the communication in the right way is the way uh, forward. And when you think of it, art becomes so much satisfying when you are able to exchange yourself with people who understand the value that you are bringing forward. Perhaps they can also bring some ideas that are inspiring you. So actually to get connected, to uh, get over this isolation is actually something from which your art will uh, profit. So the question is perhaps less about isolation, but perhaps about what or why you are isolating yourself. I don't mean on a personal level, on the uh, professional uh, level as an artist, as a creative, because most likely all we are, when you are isolating yourself from the art market, from the exchange, from the communication, it is um, something that you are deciding on. Normally it, it's happening that we are communicating with people. So actually you are using isolation out of some necessity because you are thinking that there is something from which you can profit in it. Something that is giving you in a way a value. So you are isolating yourself. So to the, I think the first question you should ask yourself perhaps when you are struggling with it or someone that you know struggling it, what is the profit for you from isolation? And interesting enough, when I'm talking with students, with my clients, one of the most interesting answers that appears um, always is actually that, that putting yourself in front, communicating with others means a lot of more work and so in the end, the answer why you are isolating, isolating yourself is laziness is really surprising. Of course, the people are not calling it laziness. They have other reasons for, um, for it. But nevertheless, there's a part of it that understands when I'm talking with people and when I'm getting connected with people, they are bringing their ideas, they are criticizing me and so on. I have to do some extra work. I have to think, perhaps rethink my artwork, then I have to communicate again and a whole circle is uh, beginning then. So it is important as an artist to, to actually sit down and think about it. What profit do you have for, from this isolation? And when you are writing down a list and with a reason, ask yourself, are those reasons really important? Are those re reasons really fruitful for your artistic progression? When you are honest with yourself and you can write down, I am not... Um, I am uh, still uh, is uh, isolating myself because in a way all this work and I am lazy, then think about it. You have a reason for your professional career and you are doing something because you want to, to remain lazy. Of course, there are other reasons that you should think about, but take one of the reasons one by one and think about it if it is really worth to let you hold back, to, to isolate yourself, only to have this, this one uh, outcome that you are desiring. And <clears throat> when you are writing these reasons down and you are seeing that actually you are not really profiting from, from the reasons why you, are, uh, um, why you are isolating yourself, set another list up. What would be the profit? What would you gain? Would you not isolate yourself? Would you get in contact with others? And then you can write down all the things that you are missing or losing right now, like more profits, get connected with interesting people, get new ideas for your art and so on. And when you have both of this list, you can then decide still to isolate yourself, but you can make really the decision conscious, not just as before a default, not as something that creeped of a time in your conscious that you not even know that you have made the decision, but then you can make the decision. And of course, there are artists who are really successful because they are isolating themselves and not having any connection with the outer world. This can be also, this can also be work, but most likely, you, your probability to be successful is to get involved, to, to see in art a form of communication, to build up a, 
uh, network. And this is something, this is actually something that is holding most of the artists back to really this word networking, building up a network, is something that they are shy away from. It is so complicated and then you have to find all these people and, and connect with these people and perhaps you are getting frustrated or someone will say no and so on. So there is also a whole bunch of reasons why we isolate yourself, ourselves because we are thinking that networking is such a hard job to do. But think about it. Is it really? Because the reason why you are doing art is actually because you are interested in certain values, certain ideas. Perhaps you have even a, a great vision that you are interested in. And just think about it. Out there are people who are also interested in those ideas, those values, those ideas, or share even a vision um, with you. It is like Let's make it a little bit uh, easier to, to, to uh, as example. Let's say you love sandwiches. You love all about sandwiches, the way they are made, how they taste, and so on, all about sandwiches. And, of course, you can love your sandwiches, make your sandwiches, sit down and eat the sandwiches just by yourself and enjoy them. But just think about it. There are people out there who are even also loving sandwiches and they want to talk about sandwiches perhaps they are writing about sandwiches and then you can get in contact with those people and together you can share your love for sandwiches isn't that great perhaps you can come together and enjoy it even together and exchange your ideas <coughs> i think the taste of sandwiches i'm not a sandwich expert by the way would increase by sharing this food with, with all the people or you can take wine as another example, something that I'm very passionate uh, about, good wines, to, to find the other wine experts and to talk with them, <clears throat> discover new wines that I don't even know about, like, um, like new kinds of putting wine together, new kinds of wine tasting. It is a world on its own. And just to sit by myself somewhere and drink my wine and because I only know so much so much wines always the same wine is it's not something that has to do with passion love and progression to open you up can be actually a win so when you see the progression of or building up of a network from the uh, point of sharing the same passion the same ideas the same values perhaps even the same vision, it can become something that is actually from the beginning a, a win for you. There's no way you should get connected and, and interact with people who are not sharing your ideas, your passion, your vision for, you, for, for, the, for what your art is about. When you are perhaps someone that is uh, painting paintings of beauty, freedom and, and balance, there's no way you should get connected with uh, a gallerist that is perhaps um, all about, um, I don't know, uh, being uh, a traditionalist or even being a Nazi. Let's, let's go even to this uh, example to make it obvious. This is a, a connection in a network that you shouldn't even try because it is leading to nowhere. You should always get connected all, uh, and build you uh, network around the same values, the same ideas and the same uh, vision. So there is a passion, a, a reason for exchange, uh, exchange of ideas, values and, and a profit in the end. I will show you a simple method that you can try no matter where you are right now in the art market, a beginner, someone that is perhaps a semi-professional or even a, a really professional uh, or, or if you are really a professional in the art market. Just sit down and list all the people down who are, you are already connected with. Just write down uh, a list and then just imagine who would also share the same values, the same ideas, perhaps the same vision about art or for whom is important what I am doing, who also could be a help, a support for what you want to do and then you are expanding uh, this list and if you are uh, a visual artist you can make even out of this for yourself uh, perhaps a board 
where you can actually pin all the names together and connect them so you know how you are expanding your, your, your uh, network. I will show you it with, with a graphic. So all you have to do really is, I hope you can see this, put all the possibilities that you are already having or want to have in a circle and then making the connections and there in the circle how you are making the already established connection you can see and then you can guess okay i am an artist and i want um, a certain connection perhaps to an art collector that is also interested in, in this kind of topic in this kind of values and how can i connect with him and then you are seeing that you have already a connection picker perhaps with a gallerist who have worked with uh, this uh, art collector and so you can get introduced through the uh, art galleries with this art collectors and then you can make a direct connection and to keep the overview really simple you can uh, use different colors for, for your connections perhaps uh, the connections that are really uh, strong you can make it uh, especially thick uh, something that is problematic can be read and so on and in this way your uh, artistic network is developing as an artwork uh, on its own but nevertheless I think it is really the most important thing to, to stop being isolated as an artist or when you have the wish to build up a network is to really think about it first why are you isolate yourself what are the reasons? What do you have profit from this isolation? Is it really laziness or that you don't like to communicate with people, uh, that you have more, more, more freedom, whatever it is. And then to rethink it, are those reasons really worth it to risk your artistic progression actually? And when you have this list, it will start to bother you because most of the reasons are not really reason enough to cripple your artistic progression and then set another list where you're writing down what you are really missing by not getting connected in an artwork the lack of profit the lack of uh, new inspirations of uh, being together with people who are sharing the same uh, uh, passion as you and so on and then if you have done this and you are really open to the idea to open yourself up, open your art to, to other people, to build up their network. Start by just listing the people who, are, who do you already know and then expand this list. And then you can, as I was suggesting, build an artwork out of this, a circle, and then see the connection building up. It is so fulfilling when over half a year or, or a year all these dots are getting connected and then you have, have really a feeling of people that are coming together for, for the same reason you are doing uh, art and this can be an uh, approach that can help you out of uh, the isolation or perhaps you know someone that is isolated uh, a little bit so you can help him with this insight. I hope nevertheless that, that this idea is interesting uh, for you. As I was saying, it was all about the professional side of uh, isolation as an artist, not the personal side. This can be, of course, much more complicated. Um, if you like, you can see me in the next video. I would look forward to see you too. Until then, bye bye.